AI, 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 agentic AI. Long story short, I love AI. I mean, it's everywhere. Okay, that's that's enough. That's enough. Just. And unless you live in Southport with the penguins, you might have already heard this term before. Huh? And if you manage to not know about AI, AI is like teaching computers to think, to solve problems and learn. Basically, you're trying to mimic human behavior. With that said, I'm Anupam Marma and you're watching Engineeroids. Yep, I changed the name of my channel and also the complete aesthetic of it, as well of my Instagram page. Which was quite easy, I just had to ask my designer friend nicely. Just fucking do it! And by the way, this is his Instagram page, you can check him out, he has some amazing artworks. Back to the AI part, I wanna make something actually bought by AI. But not like a regular chatbot or model, I wanna make something physical, like Chappy or Wally or something. But there's a slight problem, I don't know how any of those AIs work. I think I can get some help from the internet. And clearly, I don't understand shit. But after a few hours of torturing my brain, I found out that I'm an idiot and I'm also quite dumb too. But the useful thing that I found out is I have to learn OpenCV, Python, MediaPipe and TensorFlow. And also how to manipulate LLMs. Well, LLM stands for Large Language Models. But soon I realized that my Ryzen APU and my remaining two brain cells cannot process LLMs because it requires quite heavy workload. So I have to get a more advanced machine, but we'll do that later. And as for the bot, let's make a feature list first. And that is uh, move and then move ahead. Show emotions, talk and see surroundings. So this is the bot and it's definitely not the bot that I built before cause that would be stupid. Well, everything I did was snap off the camera and attach a display to it. And I'm gonna call it Mu. I mean, not the Pokemon, but the Greek alphabet, Mu. It generally stands for 10 to the power negative 6, but it also represents micro. And in normal English, micro is just another word for small. And since our bot is small, we can also name it Mu. And I'm planning to make the bot funny, humorous, and kinda cool. Just like that guy over there. The Dragon Warrior! It's me! And now it's time to code it, but there's a slight problem. That AI tasks are quite intensive. And I can bet on 3 rupees that the pie can't handle that. I mean it's like making me talk to girls, heavy workload on a small potato. So I came up with this setup where all the intensive computing is being done on a quite powerful machine. And look, I know my illustration is kinda shit. Complete shit. But what do you think I'm here for? So I'll be using the earphones for the computer will then use camera will be used for computer vision using open CV and media. Can you shut up? Using open CV and media. <laughs> Okay, that, that was boring. Let me try again. Voice go computer, computer think. Image go computer, computer think again. Bot has eyes and the speaker goes <laughs> And that, that's how I plan to make it work. Objective 1, which was to make it move. And we'll start off by importing the speech recognition library, which does exactly what it says. And then we'll make a small function. What? Okay, not, not that small. So this function takes our microphone input and converts it into a string. And that's good for us, because waves are scary. And now we have to drive the motors using those commands. For which we'll use remote GPIO. Which is a legacy Raspberry Pi feature that lets you control the GPIO pins wirelessly. And after giving it the Pi's address, declaring the motors, and combining the voice commands with the if statements, we are quite ready for testing it. So we are using a cable to power it, cause the battery is not in the mood today. And now let's test it. Wake up Mew. Give, uh, I mean move your head. Okay, so it, it, it works. Turn left. Turn right. Move forward. Oof. And now it's time to give it some expressions, but that's not as simple as I thought it would be. Well, I initially thought that I'd get some video files and straight on run them on the display. But this display runs on SPI, which is a communication method between electronics. But the display that I have has a slow clock speed, ranging from 4MHz to 32MHz, which is far too low for a video playback. But I don't want still images as emotions, so I opened the spec sheet to make me think I know what I'm doing. Um, excuse me, what's the actual fu- but then I figured out I could run some images on a loop, and that's what exactly a video is. And what is just a loop of images? A GIF. So in theory, I could split the GIF into frames and loop them, and get it running at a decent frame rate. Problem solved. Obviously it won't be a focused 60fps experience, but 
it will still get its job done. And now let's take a look at the code. So we are on the Pi right now and I'm using the ST7735 library for configuring the display with the Pi. Well, all I'm doing is run a loop for the images with the condition depending on a variable which can be controlled by the host computer through sockets. And I, I don't know how I got the sockets working but somehow I did. And I would not recommend messing with this code. And this is the client side of the code. So everything is ready for testing it and we'll run the code on the Pi with the initial state happy. So the animations are working perfectly and let's check if the sockets are. So I'll change the state from sad to happy on the client. And it works. But we still need custom animations for this. And after getting the animations in a quite peaceful manner, we are ready for the next step. And that is implementing AI. And before doing anything, let's plan some things out. We want the bot to be interactive, expressive, and also make it see stuff. Wait, what? And to make it interactive, we need a large language model. Well, in simple language, it's just a pre-trained AI model, which in my case is Phi. It is a 3 billion parameters model, but you can use any open source LLM. Just make sure your hardware supports it. And we'll be using the same LLM to detect the tone of the prompt and express emotions according to it. For now, we only have these emotions, but you can add them in the future as per your choice. And to make it see stuff, we need OpenCV and MediaPipe. Well, MediaPipe is developed and maintained by Google and is another pre trained AI model, but for image processing. And now let's take a look at the code. We actually have four files, and I'll break them down one by one, starting off with movement. This file handles all the GPIO processes, such as controlling servos, turning motors on or off, or even turning on the smaller DD. So we are connected to the Pi through remote GPIO and here are all the basic functions that we are going to call in the main file. Moving on to response. This file handles all the conversations. It has the speak function, the register voice function and the LLM output function which handles the AI model. And also this file contains the detect emotion function. And in the LLM output function we are storing the input and output in a file called context.txt which basically holds all the conversation history and it acts like the bot's memory. And now on to computer vision. This file is ran parallelly to the main file in another shell. This is because the main file and this file requires two separate loops running at the same time. Obviously I could use something like multi-threading to achieve this, but do you really think my tiny brain could comprehend that? Anyways, this file tracks my face for maintaining eye contact and follows some gestures for movement. And on to the final file, which uses all the functions mentioned earlier. So we have a while loop that houses those functions. However, this loop is activated only when you speak wake up. And then if your command is a movement command, it, the bot will move. And if it's not, it will send it in for the AI model to assess it and report you with a suitable output. So we are on the Pi right now and the code that you see here streams a camera footage to a web page. And with softwares like OBS or Minicam, you can access that as a webcam and feed it into OpenCV. However, this code is not written by me. I found this on GitHub. Overall, it took a long time, but let's see if it works. Okay, so that happened because I didn't turn the Pi on. So this is the best machine I could get. It has a 1650 and obviously it's not the best graphics card out there, but Vegas can't be chooses. And also because my graphics card has joined this Valhalla. So I'll be using these earphones to register my voice and the laptop speaker for the output. Well, this is because I didn't have a small enough speaker to fit on the board. However, you can follow this video and get the output from the Pi. And now let's actually test it. Wake up, Mew. Hello, I am Mew. Well, this LED indicates when the bot is listening to you. Turn left. Turning left. Move forward. Moving forward. What's your name? My name is Mew. I am an AI chatbot. Fuck you, Mew. See, it gets angry. And now let's test the computer vision of it. You are cute. So this is a gesture drive mode which works when you put your palm in front of it. It, it works. Tell me a poem in about 60 words. Sure. Here is a poem for you to enjoy. 
The sun sets on the horizon, painting the sky with hues of red and gold. A gentle breeze whispers through the trees, as birds sing their evening song. The world is still, in peaceful serenity, as nature's beauty unfolds before our eyes. In this moment, all worries fade away, and we find solace in the calmness of the night. Go to sleep, Mew. Going to sleep. See, AI has no limitations, but my machine has. And eventually I had to stop somewhere. And this is a quite nice point to leave it. However, the code is completely open source and published on GitHub. So any contributions are welcome. So that was the video and I'll see you again.